For those clients that currently work with us, this might just be um, a reiteration of what you know about our organization, but uh, Imagine It Technologies is really um, a state-of-the-art, best-of-breed partner in not only the Autodesk world, but also consultative services as well as custom development. Um, so these next couple slides are just going to kind of walk you through who we are. RAND is a worldwide company. It encompasses not only Imagine It, uh, RAND 3D, as you can see, so training and and uh, also Ascent. So we write all the courseware for Autodesk. So completely well-versed in uh, all the applications that surround the Autodesk families, in addition to the consulting services that I mentioned. Uh, we have offices across North America. So we really do feel like we've got great coverage, uh, whether you have a multi-location uh, firm or whether you're a regional firm or just a localized firm, as you can see by the pinpoints on this map. We, um, we definitely cover most of the U.S. and as well as Canada. Um, some of the things that we offer from a professional services or consulting, um, data late, or product PLM um, implementations, all kinds of different things. So again, if you're not um, working with us currently, we certainly ask that you reach out to us via our website or, or your local rep to understand a little bit more about what we can do to help with workflows, technologies, best practices and all the things that go into how you guys want to be more streamlined and work in a more productive environment. <clears throat> we are the largest Autodesk reseller. Um, actually, we just found out recently that we're the largest global Autodesk reseller. So that's pretty exciting for us. Bigger always isn't always better. So keep in mind, we do um, really take each client's opportunity and, and workflows into consideration when we come out and do our consulting with you, um, just to put you in, position you as best of breed in your industry. We also do have um, Productivity Now as well as some other support programs that have e-learning encompassed into a support offering. So we certainly would like to take advantage of you guys utilizing our uh, desk and depth and knowledge of the industry and what other organizations are doing, again, to keep you guys best of breed. We also offer scanning, um, Archibus, as well as our uh, proprietary um, utilities. So when you're a client of Imagine It, you can get these utilities at no charge. And certainly if you're not a client but you see value in our utilities, um, that's a nominal fee to go ahead and, and utilize those. Um, we've done a lot here with the business model transformation and Autodesk and switching to collections. So if you do have questions around your Autodesk business model or what you have deployed in your organization, we'd be more than happy to help consult and make sure that you're utilizing the best of technologies within your organization and, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as making sure that the product mix that you have is appropriate for, again, workflows, deployment, and your staff. Let's get started. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Greg Dorman. He is one of our senior business consultants. We are very fortunate to have Greg presenting today. So Greg, without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you, Beck, and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Beck, are we seeing the slides okay? Do yes, sir, we are. Slide, Thank you. Okay, excellent, excellent. Just get my screen arranged here and we'll get started. Well, welcome everybody, and I, I appreciate you spending uh, a portion of your day with us here today. Uh, what we'll be talking about today is sharing vault data with the outside world. Um, we're going to start with just a, kind of a recap of why the industry uses Vault Professional. Then we're going to talk about if you're interested in sharing data externally with Vault Professional, what are some of the key principles that need to be in place for that to be an ex a successful effort. And then we're going to review the Autodesk options for collaboration with, with uh, external sources from Vault. So those are the three main topics, and, and we'll, we'll dig in. Um, so first, we'll uh, just go through a little bit of a recap. I'm sorry, just one second as I get my screen. Uh, I had a, a pop-up come up on my screen there. So just a little recap on why we're using Vault Professional. I'm going to start off with saying Vault Professional is very, very heavily used in the manufacturing industry today. It is one of the most heavily used PDM systems in the marketplace, and imagine it alone has thousands of customers using Vault. 
it's a very, very highly adopted solution for a lot of, uh, you know, obvious reasons as you look at where the, you know, the transformation in manufacturing to 3D has come from over even the last 15 years, the necessity to be, to be able to effectively manage those interrelated 3D data sets has warranted a solution like Vault. And when we look at really, you know, what are some of the re main reasons why our customers use Vault Professional, they really kind of fit into three buckets. You know, the first bucket is process control. So, you know, our customers need to be able to effectively design using, uh, you know, with you know, being able to effectively reuse data, have data integrity where uh, relationships aren't broken, and they also need to be able to secure their intellectual property. They also, uh, uh, from a process standpoint, uh, uh, from a process control standpoint, are looking for things like engineering change management, release management, and revs. So, and then finally, being able to establish a controlled product structure through a controlled process. So process control is one of the key reasons, and many of our customers come with, to us simply with design productivity process challenges where they can't get their data, uh, the library information straight, or their design reuse uh, effectively hashed out where they're effectively reusing components from design designs. Uh, so process control is a big one. Uh, the second thing beyond productivity within process control becomes rev control and engineering change management. So those are a couple of the big driving factors that, that have, uh, have uh, been key reasons why people have adopted Autodesk Vault. The second reason is uh, continuity of information flow. Once again, leveraging data reuse so we can effectively flow information from the start to the end of the, of the design process and capture the right information at the right point in the process. Being able to capture things like part numbers early in the design process while we're modeling an inventor and have that information flow into Vault and potentially downstream into an ERP system or another business system is, is a huge benefit where it saves having to do data reentry between system to system. A bill of materials also fits into that category. Once again, if we define our model structure properly and we have process control where we can control the release of that data, we have the ability to take the bill of materials effectively from that model structure through our vault system into our, into our uh, uh, enterprise resource planning system, our business systems, systems like SAP, Epicor, and uh, IFS, and many of the other uh, commonly used ERP systems on the market. So the third big bucket, and the main thing we're going to be talking about today is collaboration. Uh, you know, there's, I think, you know, some of the common uh, collaboration workflows that are in place today in Vault are multiple people working on the same project. You know, we have three designers and two engineers, and they all need to be able to work together on the same project. So what's it going to take to get those five people effectively working together? Functions like check-in and check-out help maintain that. Things like lifecycle states in Vault help us to determine if something's released or if it's work in progress where it's still in an editable mode and that facilitates that internal collaboration. We also have many customers that have multiple locations. You know, within their own organization, they have offices across the globe or across the country or in multiple uh, geos, and being able to share that data and work on design projects effectively together as if they're all underneath the same roof is a huge, huge necessity with many of our customers, and that's something that vaults in place in many of our customers today solving those problems. Now, the third type of collaboration that we're going to be talking about is with external resources. And this is something where Vault has those capabilities, but we haven't seen a lot of, uh, a lot of our customers utilizing that yet. And there's a number of different reasons why, and we'll be talking about those reasons here today. But I think the bigger message is there's a lot of possibilities there. You know, with the tools that you have today, you likely have the technology to share data safely, securely, and productively with, uh, with external resources. So moving on, we'll take a quick look at what is product data. So let's uh, start and look at the data set we're working with when we explore how do we get from a concept to a product. You know, we have to consider what data gets generated along the way, who uses the data, whether they're internal or external resources, 
And how is that data being accessed today? Is it being emailed around? Is it being uh, posted to an FTP site? Are we using OneDrive? What are the methods we're using today? So let's first take a look at what data are we talking about here? Well, first of all, there's design data. You know, in, it, in the conceptual phase, that sketches, layouts, uh, sim simple simulations, for example. As we get into the prototypes, we maybe get into things like more robust simulations, prototype models, uh, analysis data. And then the majority of the data we find in Vault is detailed design data, detailed model schematics, wiring harnesses, and production drawings, the most common things that we find in Vault. But these are all examples of engineering-centric data sources. And we also need to keep in mind that products require many types of documents. It's not always just engineering documents. You know, sometimes there's specifications, quality documents, technical publications, CAM, schematics, project plans, manufacturing process lists, uh, part lists, bill of materials, and other things that go along with that data. So it's engineering data, but it's not just engineering data. There's supporting data that goes with that. It's also important to remember that this data contains structured relationships. So these are not just one-off files. There's often a, a 3D model structure involved with top-level assemblies. Those have sub-assemblies, and those sub-assemblies have more sub-assemblies and parts. Now, drawings are also linked to that. A key, uh, key uh, uh, models within this, uh, this overall assembly are going to have their own individual drawings as well. Those drawings also are, are supplemented by marketing data, specifications, analysis data, assembly instructions, CAM data. All of those informations are related to the model structure and are linked to key pieces of that model structure within its own relevance. And just, so, just for example, this front end loader example that I'm, I'm working with here today has 3,500 interrelated files that make up its product structure. So it's more than just CAD drawings. It's more than just models and assemblies. It actually gets into some of these peripheral data sets as well. And when we look at how that data is leveraged throughout the organization, what we find is, in many cases, sales will have a specification that goes to engineering. Engineering does preliminary design and detailed design. Marketing maybe creates rendering. Purchasing takes drawings. Those drawings are sent outside to suppliers. Quality control leverages those drawings. Production leverages drawings for CAM, machine code. Assembly instructions are provided to the shop floor along with drawings to support that the assembly and quality uh, process as it flows through the product's life cycle. So as you can see from this slide, there's a lot of different people leveraging this data in a lot of different roles throughout the organization. Now, if we take a look at where Vault fits into this world today, you know, um, we see a pretty internal, uh, a pretty internal uh, uh, role that is playing. You know, we'll have the designers, the mechanical engineers, uh, from the electrical engineers, the analysts, civil engineers, plan engineers, and factory planners, engineering manager in this example, all accessing that data within that organization through the vault. But these are primarily uh, internal roles. The beautiful thing about vault is that provides a, sing a repository as a single source of truth. So as any of these people in these different roles are using this data, they are not wondering, do I have the latest version of the file? The process control within vault guarantees it's the latest version of the file. So when implemented properly, vault provides that data in all of these different users are able to work on that data, confident that they're working from the latest revision and their contributions are moving in the right direction and not going to lead to work or rework later down the process. So now let's look at the external collaboration options. And this is quite a list. These are all the different tools that Autodesk has available to collaborate with, with uh, uh, Vault and different levels of Vault, Vault, Vault Workgroup, and Vault Professional. But Vault Professional has all of these options available to it today. And this can be a little bit of, uh, you know, I'm sure many of the people on the line are familiar with these different, uh, these different interfaces and have maybe even looked at some. 
but it's hard to, I think, for many to understand how do they tie together? What are my options? I'm using Bolt today. What's my best path to, to external collaboration? And hopefully we can shed a little bit of light on that today. So let's talk about the path to external collaboration. The first thing that has to happen for an organization to effectively collaborate with the outside world is we have to have internal data control. The last thing we want to do is share uncontrolled data outside of our organization. It's all the more hard to deal with those challenges once the data is outside of our organization, and many organizations have trouble dealing with that internally. And that's mainly, and for many of our organizations, that's why they went to Vault Professional. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to have internal data control. What does that mean? Well, at a minimal, at a minimum, that means files are changed through a revision control process. It can't be, uh, you know, th there there really must be a revision control process in place for external collaboration to be effective. If there's not, it's going to be very difficult to keep track of who's got the right revision of the file. So key principle, files need to be controlled and changed through a revision control process. The second key point is data must be secured by folder and process, ensuring that files are not changed out of process. So just having rev control is not necessarily enough. We also need a way to lock data down when it is released so we have the ability to uh, uh, not only ensure that uh, um, the data is going through a revision control process, but also the revision control process is being respected throughout. That means when something's in a release state, it's not getting changed without somebody starting a new revision and taking it through that process. It's also important that revision history can be audited. Um, you know, many of our customers not only want to know what the latest rev is and be confident they have the latest rev, but they also need to be able to show the story of how they got there. You know, when did, you know, when did this rev go in effect? What was the prior rev? Why was a change made? Who made it? When was the change made? Are, are, are questions that often need to be answered during audits or even through just troubleshooting to try and find a better way to solve a problem or come up with a better design. The audit trail is very critical, and it's even more critical when you start having external uh, users working with your data. Being able to be able to look at that history, potentially review that history against current changes and evaluate progress is critical. So this internal data control is absolutely critical. Another thing I will say on internal data control is it's also important to have your data structured so that you can determine what you want to share and what you don't. You know, often that's by folder, sometimes that's just by individual files, but that's going to also determine what mechanisms need to be in place to adequately secure the data. So the second thing you have to be able to do is you have to be able to effectively internally collaborate. If you can't internally collaborate, whether it's just be because you don't have those system things in place we talked about in point one, or it's, it's just not uh, something that your, your business is doing today, it's really something that needs to be thought out. So internal collaboration is a key, a key uh, if, you're, if you're effectively internally collaborating today, you're making good progress towards an external collaboration. So, and this really requires visibility of the evolving design. It means, you know, some key points there is we need to be able to know who's working on what. Vault provides a lot of tools, as we can see on the screen capture on the right side of the screen, where we can see which of these files are released, which ones are work in progress, who's working on what, the status of pending changes. And this effectively allows us to work together on this design without stepping on each other's toes as we do so. But we have to be able to do this internally if we expect that we're going to be able to do this effectively with the outside world. So internal collaboration, if we can do internal collaboration, we're a long ways along the path to being able to effectively um, collaborate externally. So the third thing we need to do is determine what are the collaboration use cases. You know, as we discussed, there's a lot of different options from Autodesk that allow us to collaborate. And for us to know which path we want to take, we have to be able to define what are the, the use cases or the scenarios that we're looking to solve. You know, so I'm showing three common ones, and these are kind of big bucket uh, use cases in, uh, 
on the screen here. The first use case is we may simply want to get feedback. We may want to be able to just share a visual representation and get feedback quickly and easily using the Autodesk viewer. So, uh, you know, that may be somebody in the shop floor, that may be a, a, a contract partner, a, a, it may be a customer where I want to very simply get visual, a, a visual representation to an external source that's controlled and reliable and easy for them to, to work with. You know, PDF and email is the most common way to do that today. And you can look at, and, uh, at what Autodesk has to offer as we'll be showing today. And I think you'll see some powerful improvements in that workflow if it fits for you. Uh, the second use case we wanna discuss is just delivering design files. Maybe I have a, 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 a job shop manufacturer that does machining for my company, and I simply need a way for them to get native files so they can call them up and do uh, CAM operations on it. It may only be a one-way uh, transfer where I just need to send them data and I need to have control, a good way for me to, other than using Dropbox or, or OneDrive like that, something a little bit more robust where I can share files with them without losing the intelligence, but uh, also um, making it a one-way uh, just publishing of that data. And then the third use case, it would be the use case of like a remote engineering team or uh, an, an external vendor where we actually want to collaborate on designs together. Uh, and in this use case, you know, we have the potential for people on both sides of the, of the equation to be editing data. You know, we have our internal users that are using potentially AutoCAD or Inventor and Vault today, checking that data into Vault Professional, but then we also have some, maybe some specialized engineering resources uh, that are, are external to our organization. We maybe hire out simulation, and I've got a simulation team that I would like to collaborate on this project with in real time. Well, what we're gonna talk about today is some methods for doing that using Autodesk technology. So we're gonna start by talking about this first scenario in just this getting feedback. So. Autodesk offers a technology called Shared Views, and Shared Views has been in the product for a couple releases, but a couple key points. One, it's improved, and two, I think a lot of people just ha haven't known it's there, but we see some very powerful use cases that this can support. You know, in this use case, we can take information from Inventor uh, through Vault, determine we wanna share that view, uh, that visual representation with our customers, our suppliers, the shop floor, and uh, make that data available to them quite simply. A couple, uh, some key points about uh, shared views. Uh, reviewers can access a viewable in the Autodesk viewer. That's so the consumer of this data doesn't have to buy anything and it is available on any device. It's all cloud-based, so that means what the viewer does, it does on a, you know, you can do it on a PC through a, uh, Internet Explorer or Chrome or Edge or whatever uh, uh, browser you prefer, but you can also use uh, an, an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device to view through the Autodesk viewer. And so that makes it a very uh, powerful tool. And it's because it's cloud-based, the Autodesk uh, shared views are available, whether you're in the office or on the road, it's available anywhere. Another thing is it's zero install. I mentioned it can use on any device. It can use, it can work on any device because it's purely a cloud-based solution and it doesn't require any installation. Uh, it does provide the ability for reviewers to sign in and add comments to the data. And uh, the comments are provided via feedback to the person who created the design view. We'll give you a quick tour of design views here. So in this case, I want to share this padlock drawing with a uh, with a uh, outside resource. And what I'll do is just re right click on that and say I want to share the view. I just give it a name. I can accept the one that it has, or I can key something else in, and then just hit share. It's it's really that easy. Now at this stage, uh, it's going to process that view, and I'll get a notice when the processing is complete here. There, it's complete. And I have two different options. I can either view it in my browser or I can copy that link. If I copy that link, I can paste that in an email and just send somebody a link to that. 
please note, um, if I send a link to that, I'm not actually sending them a static file. I'm sending them a, a link to this design view that we're opening up here. Once the consumer of this uh, opens this up, I'll log in here. And by logging in, this allows me to add comments, markups to this view. So I'm going to log in. I actually don't have to log in. I can, log, I can view this without even logging in if I choose to. But in this, uh, uh, here I can zoom in, I can pan and zoom, get a better view at this. And uh, once again, this can be done from any device, an iPhone, an iPad, uh, an Android device. And even within that, I can do markups. So here I'm gonna just do a markup. I'm gonna note that we don't have any descriptions on this parts list here. Create a cloud around that. I'll annotate this quickly. Okay. Not very original, but uh, we get the point here. So now I've got this markup. Now all I have to do is just hit the Save button, and that, that markup's been saved. So you can see on the, on the uh, right-hand side of the screen in the patent, you can see that markup's sitting there and available there, too. So now I've created a markup to this shared view. Now, as we, uh, as we uh, Look, now, the other thing I wanted to point out here is when the user's in the shared view, they don't have the actual native CAD file. All they have is, is something that's, you know, it's more, I would say it's more robust than something like just a printed PDF, but at the same time, it, it, it doesn't have a lot of intelligence in it. The best that somebody can walk away from this with is a screen capture. So for many of our customers that gets past an intellectual property threshold that they're willing to accept, and that gives us a very way, good way to share a visual representation without giving out proprietary product information. As we move back into Vault now, uh, so here we're back in Vault, what we'll see is I would like, you know, I've shared this view, but I also would like a mechanism for feedback within Vault. So what I can do here is I can turn on my shared views. Oops. And uh, actually, I'll, I wanted to show one other thing here with this. Uh, let me uh, this, These shared views can also be created for, for 2D data, sites, uh, data sets also, too. So sorry about the jumping around. But uh, what we can do here is I've got to also have a 3D assembly. Just wanted to show that I can also do a shared view of a 3D assembly. So I can take this 3D assembly, just as we did before, create a shared view once again. And I have the ability to either hide component names and part properties, or I can share those as well. In this case, I'll go ahead and share them since I want this, this is going to a strategic partner that I want to have all the information that's available uh, about the, the uh, structure of this and the property information that, uh, that is included within. So just like before, we'll tell it to create that shared view. It'll take a few seconds to process this. And once again, we have a link that I'll jump to within the browser. And once again, even with the 3D model, I have the ability to rotate this around through the cloud viewer on any device. So I can look at this from different perspectives. I can go into the model browser within here and turn components on and off. I also have the ability to isolate specific components if I want. So I can go to like this shackle I can right click and say we want to isolate that and just only find that shackle within there. So it helps me visually identify that within it. It's all 3D modeling things that maybe some of you who work with uh, viewing uh, expect, but what's neat here is it's on a cloud platform and it's pretty robust. So that gives us some new capabilities. We also have the ability, as you saw when I published this, to include information about the properties. So this means that data that started in Inventor, flowed through Inventor, or flowed through Vault Professional is also available in my shared view. So when I send this out to my external source, they're gonna see that as well. I can add a comment here as well. I'm just gonna put uh, looks good on this and post that. And that's committed to that data set. So just uh, there's also a shared view panel. I'm going to turn that on. And within that shared view panel, we can see 
the, my recent uh, uh, posts from outside, we can see the markup that I created there, as well as we can see the, uh, the uh, model that we created with my, with my notes on it. So there's the note that's coming back to me as the person who created that shared view. We also have the markup asking me to add a parts list to that drawing. When I click on that, that'll just take me back into that shared view within the Autodesk viewer. Okay. So once again, I, I think, you know, just some, some really, really powerful collaboration tools we can do here without, uh, that we can leverage without giving out intellectual property. It gives us a method to share data with the shop floor, external vendors, purchasing uh, suppliers without sending out native files. So what are the requirements for shared view and how do we access them? Well, it's a subscription benefit for Autodesk Vault Work for, uh, Group and Vault Professional customers. And uh, we assign access to shared views to the users in the contract management, so external reviewers don't require so basically, to create shared views, it requires a, a permission through, that gets turned on, but there's no charge for that if, uh, uh, for internal users. And then for external reviewers, the people that would be consumers of this data, they require no licenses. So that's a, one of the beautiful things about this. There's no installation on the other end, and there's no licenses required to leverage it. Now, the second method we're going to talk about is delivering design files using Autodesk Drive. This is a, a fairly simple uh, uh, solution, and, but it, what it does is it integrates Autodesk Vault with kind of like a OneDrive or a Dropbox type solution. So if we just wanted a simple way to get a directory of files to a outside resource, this is an, op uh, an option for sure. Um, it integrates into the Pack and Go. So as you can see on the screen, if I uh, select the data set and then I have the ability to select in the send to uh, section, the ability to send that to, uh, to Autodesk Drive. Through that, I can select which share within that Autodesk Drive I wanna go to. I might have multiple for multiple vendors. So this gives me the ability to select one out of many that I want that to go to. I can also include a transmittal report with this as it goes. So when I hit okay, the vault system will transfer those files from my vault system. It will create copies on my Autodesk drive and create a transmission middle report that will be included within that package. Now, Autodesk drive is more than just one box or one drive. When you get in there, you actually have some intelligence in there. So it understands the relationships between the data sets. And this is very important when you're using more complex data sets like 3D data sets. So the collaborator can access design files in Autodesk Drive. The design references are maintained, so there's uses where used information uh, that's available to the consumer of the data. Uh, the uh, drawing tabs are available if they need to look through multiple tabs of the drawing. And obviously there's viewing capabilities. Uh, so when I pick on that, I can actually view that file. And we will show you, uh, much like with Autodesk View, it doesn't require a download. I can just select the file on the icon image and it gives me a viewable window. Uh, requirements for Autodesk Drive. Um, Autodesk Drive is available as a part of uh, uh, a subscription for uh, Inventor, Vault Workgroup, and Pro. And it includes a CAD aware 25 gigabytes of cloud storage. Uh, so it works to support individuals and small teams. I wouldn't say this is a, a great solution for sharing your entire vault, but if you're talking about a project or sub assemblies within your vault, it can be a very, very effective tool for sharing data. It also supports over 60 types of, of, of files and third-party files. So it's not just Autodesk data. I'm not gonna get deep into that today, but it's worth looking into if you're using more than just Autodesk data. Some of those other data types also are supported with an Autodesk drive, and it makes it a very robust tool when, when you get into kind of some of the real world challenges that hit you when you start to uh, try to collaborate with somebody outside your organization. The third method, and I think the most robust method when we're talking about just sharing native files outside of Vault is, collabor is, is integration with Fusion Team. Now, Fusion Team uh, is, uh, is a, 
is, there's, there's several different Fusion products. You have Fusion 360, which provides uh, 3D modeling. You have Fusion Lifecycle, which provides project, product lifecycle management. And then you have Fusion Team. Fusion Team is, file, is, is design collaboration. So it shouldn't be confused with uh, Fusion Lifecycle. Fusion Lifecycle is a robust product lifecycle management team, uh, a, a product lifecycle management solution. Fusion Team is a design collaboration tool. So the way Fusion Team works is, you know, inside your firewall, users are using Autodesk Vault Professional, and uh, you know the mechanical engineering, uh, en the engineering manager, the analysts, the procurement manager are doing the same things they would normally do using Vault Pro. But we can also designate key information by folder, by file that we want to share with the outside world, and with the Fusion Team, we can actually synchronize that data to the Fusion Team Hub, which gives them we can give access to that hub to customers, the supply chain, and uh, design contractors as well. You know, some of the key things about Fusion Team are Fusion Team provides bi-directional exchange of CAD documents, uh, you know, between Vault and Fusion Team. So it's not just a one-way uh, transfer. It's not just from Vault to Fusion Team. It also can be from Fusion Team to Vault. So the ability to take in new uh, data uh, that was authored outside of Vault and put into Fusion Team by an external source can be loaded into Vault automatically through the Fusion Team integration. Also, existing files that are it can be changed within. Uh, so, like for example, if I have a work in process file in Vault, it can be changed within uh, Fusion Team. Uh, in a controlled manner as well. And we'll walk through some of those workflows here in a second. So key points, it's, uh, it, it also has CAD awareness for folder and link support. So it means that we're, we're, you know, the uses, the where used information goes along with the data, not just dumb files, but files and their structured relationships that are necessary to effectively work with that data set goes as well. Um, you know, we don't have to share everything. It can be just selective data. It can be a folder. It can be a subfolder. It can be just a couple specific files we select. So there's a number of different ways that we'll discuss that we determine what we're going to share. So let's take a quick look at this. I think it's probably a picture's worth a thousand words, and I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration of how this works. So first of all, Fusion Hub provides a, a interface to your data. So this is the view that the remote engineering team would see. And here I have several folders. Each of these folders are linked to a folder inside of my vault professional environment. I can, uh, and I can have one of these folders or multiple folders. It depends on what I want to share. As I drill into these folders, this subfolder structure matches my vault. I can see all of my data. I have basic search capabilities. I can select a file. And you can see once I select on a file, I have uses and where used information here as well. So as we discussed, that intelligence that comes along with the data set uh, is there. It's not just, you know, traditionally you had to go to Vault to see these relationships or open it up in Inventor. Fusion Team provides external resources with that same view to show what the makeup of this assembly is as well. So, here I'll go to the used in and I actually want to navigate to that file. I can just click on it and navigate to it, and that sets that to my current document within Fusion Team. If I click on it, just like with the shared view, it leverages the Autodesk Forge-based viewer, and I can easily open this up, rotate it around, look at it from a different perspective, explore this model from a lot of different ways without having any software loaded on my machine and do this from any device. Um, also with drawings, um, here we'll just take a look at a drawing too, just to show much like what we uh, saw with the, with the shared views. With Fusion Team, we also have the ability to put drawings in here as well. So here I've got a drawing in Fusion Team. Once again, this, is, uh, this has been published up, up to Fusion Team, so it's in sync with Vault. But at this stage, I also have the ability to do markups in here from the external source. So I just added a quick note on here, I wanted to add a uh, chamfer to this edge for final assembly. So that kind of gives me a path to do markups as well. So 
Fusion team provides a very robust user interface. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it's more visual than like a Dropbox or a OneDrive for, for sharing CAD data. It also provides bi-directional uh, capabilities and it provides the ability to, uh, to actually see the relationships and the more complex uh, embedded aspects of that interrelated 3D data set. Oops. So how do you create these shared views? Uh, you know, there's a couple, how does the data get there? That's a, kind of one of the key questions that people might have. Uh, for, one way is on demand. So very simply, I can just say, I want to upload this to a cloud drive. So I just right clicked on that file, said I want to upload that to a cloud drive. And that'll bring up a dialog that uh, it asks me, what source do we have? Now here I just have one source. I have a remote engineering share on Fusion Team. But if I had multiple vendors, I could have multiple sources there. So by simply right-clicking on that, I was able to share that file, and that will place that file in Fusion Team. Now, also, we may need to uh, also we may need to be able to control when this data is published. Uh, from uh, other aspects. For example, a common thing that we would do, and we're gonna go into the configuration here and uh, go into where we configure this. We also have the ability to um, control automated ways that data gets published. So a couple things I wanna point out, and this is something that an administrator would set up to enable uh, a Fusion uh, team to be integrated into your Vault professional environment. But as I set this up, I wanted to point out kind of some of the control that you have. I'm not trying to teach you how to configure this. I just wanted to show you that you do have control here. It's not all or nothing. So for example, the administrator controls, how does data get up to the system? And so by this, I'm setting, I, I as the administrator set up this remote engineering share. I specifically as the administrator determined which folders in Vault could potentially have data up there. It doesn't mean all data from those folders are going up there but it is enabling those folders to be transported and then other rules come into effect. Some of those other rules are, is have I selected um, to enable this manual sync? If I've selected to enable this manual sync, that will allow me to, uh, uh, a user to right click and upload the uh, cloud data sources I just show, show, uh, showed. Um, the other thing that we have within here is the ability to control, do we want it to just be a one-way transfer or a bi-directional transfer? Now, the most robust is bi-directional. That's where I would publish out to a Fusion Team Hub, and then I would uh, uh, also be able to pull in changes or new files back from that. But I have the ability to make it just a single direction as well, if you want a, a kind of a, a simpler solution where it's not changing on the other side. The other thing is we can control the schedule as to when does this transfer happen. Now, it, I had it set to every day, but I can also change it to happen every eight hours, as I just did. The other thing we can do is tell it to send data on certain events. So for example, what I wanna do is just transfer all released data up there. That's a common workflow that makes a lot of sense if in the Vault professional environment. And so that's what I'm setting up here is so that it is transferring files when they are released. So any new files that are released within those shares that I've specified here are going to be published up to my Fusion Team Hub. Okay. So just in a summary, uh, a couple of the things that we've talked about here, we've talked about Fusion, uh, we talked about shared views. Shared views is available with a uh, work group and work or, or Vault work group or Vault Pro. It just requires a web browser and it requires subscription to have that available to you. Uh, Autodesk Drive, once again, works with Vault work group and Vault Pro. It requires the desktop connector, which uh, is available through the, your subscription plan, also be installed. And beyond that, it just requires um, subscription. Fusion Team, which we just showed, only works on Vault Pro. It does require a job processor, 
be set up to, uh, to manage what's called Project Sync, which is the dialog I just showed where we set up the different rules about how that gets synchronized, when and what information gets shared. So a job processor is utilized there. That would have to be part of your architecture is to include a job processor. It also uh, uses the desktop connector, uh, which is available through subscription, and it is provided to you uh, if you have sub, uh, um, a subscription to the product design and manufacturing collection. And if you have the PDMC, it also includes a single name, it includes a named Fusion Team user for every license of uh, Vault Professional you have. So the neat thing about what we've talked about here today is most people have it. If you're using Vault Professional today, you very likely have all these technologies available to you. And the key is just figuring out which of these technologies best maps to your particular use cases and needs and coming up with a plan to get them turned on. And those are the things that I think Imagine it can do a great job helping you out with. And uh, we welcome follow-up discussions to, if you're interested in any of these to determine, help you determine which of these paths are the right answer for you and if they can help support your needs for external collaboration outside of your organization. So with that, uh, that's the content I had prepared today, and I will turn it back over to Beck to uh, wrap up. Thank you, Greg. That was a wealth of information. Um, I know we've given you guys a lot of information today. I hope that you found that it resonated with you and potentially your organization. I think my biggest takeaway is that if you've invested in Autodesk Collections, you possibly can already have this workflow. It's just a matter of having a conversation with us on how to deploy it and what makes sense for your organization. So as Greg said, should you want more information, please reach out to us, imagineit.com or certainly your local rep. And with that, Cassie, I see we have some questions in the queue.